and welcome to another episode of Crizzy Books. I'm Crizzy, or Chris, but only my homeboys call me Chris. And today I'm going to be doing a review for The Old Man and the Sea by Ernest Hemingway. The Old Man and the Sea was published in 1952, and this is considered a all-time greatest book ever, one of the the best things ever written. I've had my eye on this for many, many years. I haven't read a ton of Hemingway, but what I have, I uh, I really like. I'm especially fond of his short stories. He writes manly stories for men that tend to have heart and humanity, and they don't shy away from the things that make us who we are. And uh, I think that's why he's considered one of the greatest authors uh, of all time. He also liked killing things and getting drunk. In The Old Man and the Sea, we follow Santiago, an old fisherman who's clearly past his prime. He hasn't caught a fish in something like 80 days. Um, and, and things just aren't looking great for him. He has a young boy who he trained to fish with him, who has since been forced by his parents to move on to a different crew uh, because Santiago is clearly just uh, losing it and, and not capable of doing what he used to. The young boy doesn't really like this. He still has a lot of respect for Santiago and hangs around him. And Santiago just keeps telling him, like, I'm going to catch, I'm going to catch the big one. You, you just watch. So one morning, he sets out on his boat and he goes into deeper waters, which is not normally where he fishes, and he hooks himself a gigantic marlin who over the course of three or four days he fights with, um, keeping it on the line. And not only is he fighting the fish, he's fighting against himself, his old body uh, also working against him, uh, nature working against him. Eventually he does get the, uh, the marlin up. He finally catches it, he kills it, he straps it to his boat, and he starts making his way back to shore when sharks catch wind of what's going on and just continually attack his boat and have themselves a little marlin feast uh, off of the trophy that he's caught to the point where by the time he gets back to shore, there really is nothing left of this gigantic fish that he's caught and he's left with just the bones and scraps that were left and he himself is just beaten and broken and uh, this is what he has to show for it, uh, the tattered remains of a, of a gigantic fish. And I thought that this was really, really good. Uh, I can totally see why it's a classic. And for how short it is, Hemingway just packs in a ton of symbolism and just uh, heart. And I, I really liked it a lot. So let's let's dive into it. I just really love this story about an old man who his best days are behind him, but he still has this need to prove himself and prove that he has still got it, that he still has value and that he can hang with the best and the rest. And he proves that he clearly can, but at what cost, you know? And this story is just really well told. We see the struggle of this man um, who's not only going against nature, but like I said, against his own body. He's having hand cramps. He's getting cut up by the line. He's just really fighting against himself as well as the fish. You could feel his struggle and his internal turmoil. And there's excitement within that because... Through this struggle, he also succeeds, and, and it feels really good to, to feel that success with him because he earned it. But then that disappointment when he's gone through all of this just to have it wiped away it pretty much immediately, uh, making it feel very pointless. And it's, yeah, it really is kind of an emotional roller coaster, uh, you know, ups and downs. And, and uh, I think it's full of just really good, raw emotion. There's like two characters in this book. We've got the old man and, and the young kid, and they talk about baseball. But I mean, we really follow the old man pretty much the entire time, unless you're going to include the Marlin, which you could, I guess. And it's really cool to just see all of his struggles, which are inward and outward. Um, and he talks to himself out loud a lot. So we get to hear a lot of his outward conversations, but we're also hearing his inner conversations and uh, we feel his pains and we, we, we are there with him in this boat. And I really liked towards the end, he has this really kind of like sad realization of what has happened, that he has taken down this giant, powerful animal and that it really wasn't worth it and that it didn't need to die. And you can kind of feel him starting to regret doing this because there was really no need for it. It was simply for his own pride and his own ego. Uh, and he realizes that too late. In terms of writing, this is just 
like any of the other Hemingway that I've read, it's very straightforward. It's concise. It's simple. It, it doesn't really uh, take its time to do anything. It gets to the point, And I really like that. And obviously, this book is so well regarded because there is an underlying theme to all of this. And I think having done no research of my own, um, my interpretation of this is kind of what I've been getting at this whole time. It's about getting older and personal pride and man's will to prove himself to everyone else that he's still capable, that he still has value long after he needs to. And the links that people will go to to prove that um, can be disastrous, even if they're successful. And in the end, is it even worth it? Does it matter? Does anyone care besides you? After a certain point in your life, what more do you have to prove to anyone? other than yourself, that you can still do something. And I think that's a huge struggle that most people go through in their lives. And some people will do things just to prove that they can, even if it kills them. Like, when do you let go? When is enough enough? Um, at what point is it just not worth doing these types of things anymore? Pretty deep, introspective stuff. I really liked it. This book, to me, felt very similar to, if you've ever seen the movie The Wrestler, um, and or just are familiar with pro wrestling in general, I really felt this story mirroring a lot of reality in terms of pro wrestling and um, and wrestlers themselves. You could easily replace this with wrestling, and it would totally work. It could be the old man in the ring, and it would be the same thing. It is so common for old wrestlers way past their prime to still be getting in the ring and trying to prove that they still got it. And no one is asking them to do that. And they are doing it just for themselves. And it's often pretty disastrous and just not worth it. But a lot of it, it really just comes down to this personal like love and desire to continue doing something that you love, but also to prove to yourself that you can still do that and you're still capable and you're not just an old geriatric man who is broken and beaten and you need to stop. That's usually pretty painful to watch. Overall, I'm going to give The Old Man in the Sea a four and a half out of five. Uh, really enjoyed it. I totally get why it's classic, uh, especially for how short it is. I mean, this is like... This is a read it in an hour or two kind of book. But man, the story in it is really good. And I think once you start getting into your older years and your body starts deteriorating and you start really feeling old. I'm not that old, but man, I feel it sometimes. Uh, and uh, just learning to kind of let certain things go. Maybe I shouldn't do this or maybe I still will try to do something just to prove to myself that I can. But I, I really, really liked that, that, uh, that story and that journey that we go on. Great book. Highly recommend it. But what do you think? Have you read The Old Man and the Sea? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Sound off in the comments below. Be sure to like this video. Subscribe to the channel, please. And as always, thank you for watching. Bye.